Continuing in John Stuart Mill's Utilitarianism, he says, Against this doctrine, that is to say, the doctrine of utilitarianism, against this doctrine, however, arises another class of objectors who say that happiness in any form cannot be the rational purpose of human life and action because, in the first place, it is unobtainable. And they contemptuously ask, What right hast thou to be happy? So let's uh, look at the first of these objections. Uh, Mill says, it would go to the root of the matter were it well founded. For if no happiness is to be had at all by human beings, the attainment of it cannot be the end of morality or of any rational conduct. So uh, we may get to the second objection later, almost certainly not in this video. Uh, let's just clarify what he proceeds to say uh, on the attainability of happiness. Um, I may not need to comment on this much. Uh, the, the, the words of Mill, I think, will speak for themselves pretty well. The only comment I may need to make maybe the following sentence. These remarks are going to show that Mill has a nuanced understanding of happiness. He says, a state of exalted pleasure lasts only moments, or in some cases, and with some intermissions, hours or days, and is the occasional brilliant flash of enjoyment, not its permanent and steady flame. Of this, the philosophers who have taught that happiness is the end of life were as fully aware as those who taunt them. The happiness which they meant was not a life of rapture, but moments of such, in an existence made up of few and transitory pains, many and various pleasures, with a decided predominance of the active over the passive, and having as the foundation of the whole not to expect more from life than it is capable of bestowing. Look at all the elements of happiness. Now, what has he already said about happiness? Here I am commenting as I thought maybe I wouldn't. Um, he's already said happiness uh, is uh, having pleasure and not having pain. And he elaborated on the um, importance of quality of pleasure, not only quantity, and elaborated on how intellectual pleasures are of higher quality than physical. Well, now he's elaborating more. A central component of the life of happiness is not to is not expecting more from life than life is capable of giving us. And a more complete definition includes not only that, but also moments of rapture in an existence made up of few and transitory pains, many and various pleasures, and with a decided predominance of the active over the passive. Skipping a bit, the main constituents of a satisfied life appear to be two either of which by itself is often found sufficient for the purpose, tranquility and excitement. With much tranquility, many find that they can be content with very little pleasure. With much excitement, many can reconcile themselves to a considerable quantity of pain. There is assuredly no inherent impossibility of enabling even the mass of mankind to unite both, since the two are so far from being incompatible that they are a natural alliance, the prolongation of either being a preparation for and exciting to wish for the other. Uh, tranquility and excitement, both being uh, uh, aspects of uh, a happy life and being compatible. Now, uh, let's, let's keep going in the in this region of chapter two, skipping uh, several sentences. Next to selfishness, the principal cause which makes life unsatisfactory is want of mental cultivation. A lack of mental cultivation is the number two thing, the number one thing, not counting selfishness, that makes life unsatisfactory. Selfishness is what makes life unsatisfactory. It's the biggest one. Uh, judging by this sentence. Um, uh, utilitarianism is not a selfish doctrine. We'll maybe get to that in the next video. Next is selfishness, the principal cause which makes life unsatisfactory is want of mental cultivation. A cultivated mind, I do not mean that of a philosopher, but any mind to which the fountains of knowledge have been opened to which has been taught in any tolerable degree to exercise its faculties, finds sources of inexhaustible interest in all that surrounds it, in the objects of nature, the achievements of art, the imaginations of poetry, the incidents of history, the ways of mankind, past and present, and their prospects in the future, etc., uh, etc. Et now, there is an absolutely no reason in the nature of things why an amount of mental culture sufficient to give an intelligent interest in these objects of, co objects of contemplation should not be the inheritance of everyone born in a civilized country. The number one thing that prevents us from happiness is selfishness. But we'll get to that maybe in the next video. The number two thing is a lack of mental cultivation. And there's no reason why this can't be fixed. We can have more mental cultivation, which will allow us to have higher pleasures. And note that higher pleasures are not... Uh, higher pleasures are intellectual pleasures, but intellectual pleasures are not the pleasures of the philosopher as such, nor even are they, strictly speaking, for intellectuals. They are pleasures of... 
uh, enjoyment, uh, pleasures in the objects of nature, achievements of art, imaginations of poetry, incidents of history, ways of mankind, past and present, their prospects in the future. The, the philanthropist who enjoys philanthropy because of the pleasure of making the world a better place has a very high quality of intellectual pleasure. The person who enjoys film or music is enjoying intellectual pleasures. That is, that's what intellectual pleasure means. It's just any pleasure that's not physical. And there's no reason why we can't have minds cultivated to understand, uh, cultivated uh, to enjoy many kinds of intellectual pleasures and to enjoy enough of them that we can make human happiness increase dramatically. Now, what is necessary for us to have these cultivated minds? How are we going to cultivate these minds? Uh, skipping a sentence, or perhaps two, in a world in which there is so much to interest, so much to enjoy, and so much also to correct and improve, everyone who has this moderate amount of moral and intellectual requisites is capable of an existence which may be called enviable, and unless such a person, through bad laws or subjection to the will of others, is denied the liberty to use the sources of happiness within his reach, he will not fail to find this enviable existence if he escaped the positive evils of life, the great sources of physical and mental suffering, such as indigence, disease, and the unkindness, worthlessness, or premature loss of objects of affection. Bad laws and a lack of liberty are two things that prevent this mental cultivation. Also, positive evils of life, great sources of physical and mental suffering, like disease. And... Uh, the loss, the premature loss of things we care about or people we care about. The main stress of the problem lies, therefore, in the contest with these calamities from which it is rare good fortune entirely to escape, etc., etc. Poverty, disease, and bad or imperfect so social institutions, he elaborates in the remainder of the paragraph, are things that can be improved in order to uh, achieve a much greater amount, uh, I should perhaps say a much greater uh, quality um, rather than amount, well, but both really, a much greater, better uh, quantity of a much higher quality of pleasures. Mental cultivation by things like reduction of poverty and disease, improvement of uh, bad or imperfect social institutions, better laws and more liberty. These things will allow for higher mental cultivation and uh, allow more people to enjoy more intellectual pleasures, which are not strictly speaking for the intellectual alone. And all of this is um, following on his nuanced description of happiness. Uh, happiness involves moments of rapture, but an existence made up of few and transitory pains, many and various pleasures, uh, and it's a more active than a passive existence, and tranquility. Tranquility is central in the understanding of happiness. This is Mill's nuanced description of happiness in this passage of utilitarianism. Perhaps in the next video we can talk about selfishness.